in Max, 6 o'clock Eastern Time. Guests are on the Goodyear Hotline. You join the conversation on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed. And we've been watching college football. We've seen the rankings. Now come the numbers with more weight behind them. The College Football Playoff Committee unveils its initial rankings on Tuesday, ESPN's Heather Dinich. It starts off with the most obvious choice and the most complete team in the country, which is obviously Georgia. They clinched a spot in the SEC championship game because they've already won the East Division. But when you look at what they've done, they've held each of their first eight opponents under 14 points and outscored them by a collective 250 points. I don't think we're going to be surprised by the selection committee's top team when the rankings come out on Tuesday. And then at number two, I still have Alabama there. Even though they have one loss, that loss to Texas A&M, since then, they have outscored their opponents 101 to 33. They are ranked in the top five in both offensive and defensive efficiency. That's a common trait of playoff contenders. I think they deserve to be there. And then at number three, welcome to the club, Michigan State. I don't know if the selection committee is going to follow my lead here, but I gave them the nod because of that win against Michigan. When you look at what um, Kenneth Walker III has done, he should be on everyone's Heisman list. Against Michigan, he ran for 8.6 yards per carry. And then at number four, I have undefeated Cincinnati. I know it hasn't been easy each of the past two weeks against Navy and Tulane, but back-to-back -back road wins, they're still undefeated, and yes, that win against Notre Dame on the road still counts. ESPN's Heather Dinich, Georgia, Alabama, Michigan State, and Cincy, her top four. Cincinnati ranked second in both the AP and the coaches poll, but we'll see where they are when the College Football Playoff Committee unveils its rankings on Tuesday. Earlier on ESPN Radio, our Ian Fitzsimmons. For Cincinnati fans, if you're worried or hacked off when you end up five or six, don't be. This one doesn't matter. I don't expect Cincinnati to be in the top four. Uh, if you are, great. If not, and you're five or six, just go win because there's going to be attrition in front of you. If, if Oklahoma's in front of you, they still have a 7-1 and one Baylor team coming up in a couple weeks. If Michigan State's in front of you, they still have Ohio State on their docket and vice versa. And Penn State. If, yeah. I mean, and, and you know, if Ohio State's in front of you as a one-loss team, that they still have Michigan State in front of them. We can go on down the list here, man. I mean, Alabama still has to go to Jordan-Hare. And look what, look what Auburn just did to Ole Miss. So if you're ranked fifth or sixth, if you're in the top seven or eight, man, heck, even the top ten for that matter, there's so much ball and there's so much chaos that is still coming. Bearcats, if you're not in the top four, don't get all Betty Crocker because there's a ton of ball still left on the docket. Meanwhile, at the other end of the spectrum, speaking of chaos in the Big 12 after 20 seasons, Gary Patterson out as coach at TCU. School officials asked Patterson Sunday to finish the season, but he declined, and so Patterson was out immediately to the guys at PTI. I root for the purple schools in addition to my own, Kansas State and TCU. And now I will root for TCU to lose every game because all you got to get, and I bet that's what happened in this case, is an egomaniacal booster or boosters in the president's ear and you get a result like this where people don't know who they are and they think it's their God-given right to win every football game. Now I hope they lose every game for firing this guy. He was great at what he did. TCU was nothing before nothing he got before there. They in the Mountain West. Nothing. Come on. Much more college football coming up on KJ and Max. Paul Feinbaum joins the show 7.15 Eastern Time. As for the best of what we heard on Monday, let's bring in Steve Lennox. Number five. Jay, we begin in Philadelphia, where Seth Curry was putting the Sixers on his back and with this dagger helped his team to a victory over the Blazers. 97.5, the Fanatic with the call. Backseat to Curry, right side, three-point shot up. It's good! Seth Curry from deep. Timeout Portland, and the 76ers lead by 10. Curry is on fire. He's got 21. Number four. In Boston, the Celtics were not able to stop DeMar DeRozan from scoring, which happened at will as his 37 points helped lead the Bulls to a come back victory over the Celtics, as heard on 670, the score. DeRozan on the left elbow against Marcus Smart with a spin, double on the ball with a handoff to Caruso. Caruso driving left to right. Caruso to ball. And the Derek Horner DeRozan for three. Bam! 
the Bardorals and with 37. Number three. At Arrowhead, the Giants hung in there with the Chiefs, but Frank Clark sealed the deal with the sack of Daniel Jones for the Chiefs win. 106.5, the Wolf with the call. 20 to 17, Chiefs. Daniel Jones with Devontae Booker. On fourth down, they had a touchdown where Chiefs from the 12th. Jones is hit. Down he goes. Down he goes, and now he flips it off to a lineman who goes down. The Chiefs will get a hold here. Daniel Jones back-to-back sacks. And how about Frank Clark and Chris Jones on back-to-back sacks to win the game? Number two. In Chi-Town, it hasn't been an easy start to the season for the Blackhawks, but this Patrick Kane hat trick certainly helps. Oh, yeah. He's also jumped into number three on the Hawks' all-time points list. The call from WGN Radio. Double late to Kane over the center line down the slot. Takes a score! Hat trick for Patrick Kane! A four-point night for Patrick Kane, and what a night! As the hats come cascading down. Partisan Chicago crowd. Patrick Kane. There was some question as to whether he would even play tonight. And the number one play of the day. And finally in Minnesota, the Magic put the beat down on the T-Wolves. And Franz Wagner dropped the hammer on not one but two defenders. Has heard on 96.9 the game. Here's Franz using a Carter screen. Turns the corner. Gets to the win. Franz Wagner drops the German hammer on Minnesota. Oh my, that was nasty. Magic outscoring Minnesota 43 to 19 in the fourth quarter en route to the victory there, outscoring them by 24 in that fourth quarter. Monday Night Football, the Chiefs take the win, but it's 23 points for them in their last two games combined. Their fewest in a two-game span with Patrick Mahomes as their starter. Coach Andy Reid? Offensively, we made plays when they were needed down the stretch to get us into field goal position. Ten had a nice day with 94 yards and then it was good to get our two runners going, Gore being the, the new one, but Daryl did a nice job too, So, and that means the offensive line was also doing a nice job with the run game. Chiefs got a couple of field goals in the fourth quarter and beat the Giants by a field goal. Some raw emotions about leaving the Mile High City. You'll hear it next, Sports Center All Night at ESPN Radio. Coming up Tuesday, the Chiefs beat the Giants in Monday Night Football and hope to carry the momentum back into the playoff hunt. Plus, Key's real rankings. That's Tuesday morning. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max on ESPN Radio. Top headlines are next on Sports Center All Night.